Hey, what's up? Chanel, welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today's video is brought to you by you. If you are a patron, thank you for reminding me honestly how sick Cannibal Corpse kill is. Now, probably the least inspired Cannibal Corpse cover, but it gets the job done. You know what you're in for here. And I felt like when this first came out, this got a lot of attention on MTV's Headbanger Ball, which was making its uh, resurgence featuring Jamie Josta from Hatebreed. If you remember the commercials, you know what I'm talking about. That shit used to crack me up. <laughs> Tonight on Headbangers Ball, blah, 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 featuring Jamie Josta from Hatebreed. Like he's Grave Digger. But some of the legit catchiest death metal, like Corpse, has released. But I fell off after Vile when it came to Corpse Grinder. I liked, um, the, I think it was the Wretched Spawn. I'm trying to think. Uh, oh my god. It had, it had Chambers of Blood on it. Whatever record had Chambers of Blood on it. Because that song alone, I always liked into the chambers of blood like I just always loved that song but 13 tracks it's kind of a lot but that's probably my only real complaint with Kill and it's missing kind of the cannibal bulldozer and if you don't know what I'm talking about, like, that Rob Russe freight train, like, guitar, it, it's just, to me, I, I just, I, I love Russe, but, like, along with the Worm Infested EP, which I feel, again, some of Corpse Grinder's best material, but it's only, like, technically a re-recording of The Undead Will Feast, some covers, Systematic Elimination, and Worm Infestation, which is amazing, Worm Infested, sorry, which is an amazing track. And Kill, like, you have The Time to Kill Is Now, Make Them Suffer, which, oh, like, that's, when it comes to modern cannibal corpse that's like one of those songs where you listen to it twice and like you'll be like singing along pretty much murder worship necrosadist warning five nails through the neck uh pure fiction uh pure fiction by fire it's not future faction Purification. But, uh, Death Walking Terror, Make Up Side A. Seven tracks. Side B, Barbaric Bludgeonings. The Disciple of Revenge, Brain Removal Device. Maniacal? 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 My brain sucks. Submerged in boiling flesh and infinite misery make up the Hell's Headbangers cassette reissue of Cannibal Corpse Kill. And this came out when um, I was in Skeleton Proof Tanks. So like, a, close to 20 years, I, I think. Let me just... Yeah, yeah, it was kind of close. Nah, nah, kind of. We were just, uh, 
I was still in Skeleton Brute Tanks because I remember getting a Cannibal Corpse Kill shirt and kind of being like, like it's sick and all, but like the artwork, I don't know. Like it had, it said kill on the back and like on the front it had this like, like, you know, lock drawing of like just this monster, like he's a zombie holding like a sickle, I, I think. And it had the terrible new look. I, I, I really don't. If you watch the channel, you know I don't like the new Cannibal logo. You can't go wrong with this bad boy. And I, I understand they can't technically use it, but come on. Like, yeah. Just talking about the logo. This is also created to kill, which is Chris Barnes' vile demo. Good shit. You get to hear Barnes on Devoured by Vermin. But, uh, yeah. It's a Cannibal Corpse record. You're getting some top-notch death metal. I really like how Hell's, like, you get, I'll show you, again, with Kill, like, Worm, rid worm and, I keep saying Worm Ridden, I'm sorry. Because the fan Worm Ridden, but Worm Infested, like, you get two different pieces of art, like, but I also, I really like how Hell's used, like, red shells and stuff, like, on the, uh, just cosmetically, these are disgustingly gorgeous, and the corpse lineup at this time, I I'm not gonna lie, not my favorite lineup, but you know, you got Barrett on here at least. But Pat O'Brien, Barrett, Corpse Grinder, Paul, and uh, Alex Webster, and you have backing vocals by Eric Rutan on The Time to Kill Us Now. Engineered by Rutan back when everyone was going to uh, Mana Studios in Florida. And you had a lot of records that legitimately kind of came out that started to have that legit Scott Burns effect round two. But you had these metalcore bands like Through the Eyes of the Dead getting the same production as Cannibal Corpse, and it ends up, like, having that death metal edge, but it's not really death metal, but it has death metal production. And if you're like, what? How is Through the Eyes of the Dead not death metal? They're not. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's just some whatever... And they even had Nate Johnson at one point for Premonitions of War. And, uh, Dead Water is Drowning. And, like, I don't know what the hell happened, but, like, they could have made something really, really cool, but they went with what was popular at the time. Like, there's a new job for a cowboy record. Uh, okay. <laughs> I guess they owe, but, like, it's been getting all these really good reviews. And I'm wondering, like, do these kids even know who this band is and was? <laughs> because, like, they were, like, almost the laughing stock of, like, the real death metal scene. Like, the way Suicide Silence was, like, 
the only reason you got popular was because you used Family Guy samples. And then when your record came out by Century Media, they said, hey, you're going to have to lose those samples. And yeah, that was the end of, uh, well, not really, because a bunch of new metal kids heard it. And I don't know, that Garza dude. Look, seems like he's doing well for himself. So, whatever. Not my, just not my thing. But, I do feel like Cannibal Corpse Kill, like, when it came out, we were, we were working on our second full length, and this was kind of the opposite of what we wanted to sound like. And, I'm being dead serious. Like, we were really obsessed with Effigy of the Forgotten on cassette as well as I'm sorry I swore it was right next to me but it's not oh my goodness incantation onward to Golgotha and look somebody was learning these songs also and like they must have been learning it to play live because that song 8 song 11 with a question mark for a mortal uh, cessation Track 10 for Cursing the Afterbirth. And then, like, it's repeated two times here. The, uh, in, in the damnation, sacrificial rite of the newborn child. But, like, I've been trying for over a decade to read that. It says, like, A, T, E, D, 5. But, like, part of it's ripped off. From when I, like an idiot, took the grape, uh, blue grape, uh, merchandise company. I, I wanted the, uh, like the flyer, but this mixed with our cassette version of Effigy of the Forgotten, like, that was the production we wanted, and our record label, legitimately at the time, was like, uh, what? Like, why do you want it to sound like this? And we were like, we wanted it to sound like I said, the opposite, the opposite of like that crispy production that Kill has. And Kill has the songs, but, like, we were going down, like, a more, again, even though we were going for the effigy, like, wet blanket death metal sound, it was pierced from within when it came to a lot of our, like, main influence. That's, that was it. And... Disembowelment. So, we just wanted this, like, production that was more fitting for a cassette release or vinyl, and finally, all these years later, we did pro tapes, but, like, I'm beyond happy that I kept the computer that had the files on it because I gave it to Pat and I said, look, this has the Skeleton Proof Tanks CD mix, the cassette mix, and then there's another mix on there. If you can find the cassette mix, 
let's let's do a little let's do a little tape drop. And we did. And we sold out. And I'm just glad we did it. If anybody wants to put Skeleton Fruit Tanks grief out on vinyl, 100% open to it. Like, legit. It's 11 tracks. Like, it's a long out. Al- it's like a full album. We worked very hard on it. And still, when I listen to it, I'm like, I would not write this today. There's a couple songs that are kind of like, you could tell, like, all right, you were listening to Neurosis and, like, Nine Inch Nails. But, like, the rest of it's very incantation, suffo, meets, at times, Isis. Like, we got weird at times. And, like, there's, like, some black metal parts. But mostly it was to play live. So you had death metal with breakdowns but then when we would do like doom parts kids would mosh and it would like piss us off it'd be like what are you do? like stop like no this is not a breakdown it's a whatever but it used to it like legit used to get under my skin because it's like sometimes we would just be like yo you want to do like 15 minutes of just funeral doom at the end of the set and like oh yeah or we had this I hate God like melody type thing where it was like all improvised but like I I could do a very good Mike Williams impersonation and uh, we played this one show with like all these like shitty scene bands and stuff and uh Like, I think the banner was on it, and, like, we were like, all right, like, the wolf's cool, so, like, they'll bring some cool people out, right? (laughs) But, uh, we ended up, like, just being like, you know what? Fuck this. And we actually asked the venue, we were like, yo, can we play first? And, uh, yeah, we just did our thing, and pretty much we're like, yeah, see ya. Like, this, like, we just weren't, yeah, we weren't feeling it. We were totally out of, we were, we were legitimately, like, the only band not wearing, like, girls' pants and white belts. Like, I, I definitely, like, I'm wearing, like, a Bathory shirt. There's, like, a photo, I'm wearing, like, a Bathory shirt, and that's, like, all I really remember. Aside from just, like, we did two of our regular songs and like I said when we went into like the doomy dirge part kids are like you know like moshing and I'm like so I I just like go over to my like I whisper to everybody and I'm like yo fuck this like what like what like let's do the I hate God melody thing and I just I didn't even say anything. I think I, I might, I probably, I did. I talked shit. And then we just, 13, I think it was like probably 13 minutes we played. Uh, like just kind of like, just some southern fried sludge. And it was just fun. Cause like some of those kids, they legit thought that's like, they were like, yo, that was sick. Like a mix of death metal with sludge. And we were just like, well, at least you, you understood that part of it. They weren't trying to mosh store in that. They were like, you know, kind of like, like some of the kids legit, you could tell were like, oh man. Now imagine physically not being able to hair whip anymore. It sucks. But what doesn't suck, honestly, is Cannibal Corpse Kill. Now, the artwork 
again, like I said, probably the weakest link here. Because the songwriting's great. But, Hells, again, great reissue. George, his vocals are great, but I'm a Barnes guy. I mean, I'm getting more into Corpse Grinder when it comes to his, like, vocal style. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I, I'm going with Barnes. I, I feel like I kind of, kind of have to. I don't have to, but I want to. But if you can, legitimately, I forget how many um albums and stuff were reissued through Hell's, but like the Worm Infested EP, like as soon as I saw this, I was like, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. And Kill was kind of like obvious to me. It was just like, all right, you know, you like this already. And like Gallery of Suicide, I, I just kept, I was like, all right, like I, if I find out what, what album has uh, Enter the Chambers of Blood or Chambers of Blood, whatever it's called, that... I, I'll try and grip that n next time. Maybe. Like, we'll see what happens. It, it seems like a lot of people want some stuff from Extremely Rotten Productions. I'm going to look for it stateside. And we also need to get the new Necrot. Four people in the Patreon hit up, hit up about the new Necrot. So we got to get the new Necrot. The new Witch Vomit. And like, oh my goodness, it's written down. It's it's it, it's written down. It, it's a extremely rotten release, though. I'm just drawing malformed. That's it. The malformed. Uh, it might be an EP comp. I'm I'm not sure what, but like, again, people were just like, yo, grab the malformed release. So, but if I'm going to do that, like, that's going to, by the time you watch this, though, I mean, I, I might have placed the order already, so your patron, like, for March, just get, like, let me know what you, what you want, but, again, Cannibal Corpse Kill. A little more technical, but still, it's death metal with hooks at the end of the day, and it's Cannibal Corpse. Meat and potatoes, death metal, like, yeah, you know, it's kind of like, I don't want to compare it to McDonald's or anything like that. Because that's not fair. Because sometimes you get a shitty meal from McDonald's. And you got to know how to order, people. Watch one of my videos where I show you how to properly order from a fast food restaurant. But when it comes to Cannibal Corpse reissues, I really wish Hell's got the rights to the barn stuff. I really need... Tomb of the Mutilated on cassette. The Bleeding would be nice, but Tomb? Yeah. But I have the uh, Dark Path Records reissue with the O card of Eating Back to Life with the new logo. I know. But you get 12 tracks, but on here, it doesn't at all feel like. How long is this album? Because. You got fucking shredded remains, edible autopsy, put them to death, mangled, scattered remains, splattered brains, born in a casket, rotting head, the undead will feast, bloody chunks, a skull full of maggots buried in the backyard, 
and born in a casket. It's just banger, 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 banger. Again, butchered at birth. Nine tracks. Meat hook sodomy. Good. Living dissection. Under the rotted flesh. Cover with sores. Vomit the soul. Vomit the soul. So good. Butchered at birth. Rancid amputation. And innards decay. This is like the English, the UK edition. 1991 goodies. See inlay card for details. And look at that gorgeous logo. A classic logo. I love this J card. It's just, I, I think it's so, it's just, Awesome. Put that right there. Oh my. How bad it. Oh, that would be so sick. But I would get the abducted. At, I would get the alien skull one. The one I have on my on my leather jacket. That's like my favorite like pin. Like it's so sick. But when it comes to the cannibal, like this is not a reissue. This is the original Butcher to Birth. Thank you, Dominic. And these reissues, like I was saying, I wish Hells, you know, somehow can like do the barn stuff in the same way with like the red shell. Like, having the artwork on both sides of the cassette. Like, can you can you imagine how, like, awesome that would be? So, I, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed when it comes to Cannibal Corpse and the reissues. But Hells, they sound great. Like, Worm Infested sounds great. Kill sounds great. I used to have the CD version, and it sounds great on cassette. Highly recommended, especially if you are kind of like me and are, after all these years, like, aside from live cannibalism, I, like, I, I just, I, I like monstrosity and stuff, but I could never really, like, Vile's good, like, it's a good death metal record, but, like, after hearing Created the Kill, it's like, I'm good with this. Like, legit, I'm good. And I'm not trying to be like, you know, Mr. Cult. I only like demos guy. I'm being truthful. Like, you get all, it's just awesome. It's an awesome release. And with Kill, this is a release where you could never listen to death metal before, but, like, you could definitely change someone's life with this album. It's accessible enough to get someone that, like, might have just heard, say, the Black Dahlia murder, for example. And they're like, hey, you know, I, I, I like this. What should I check out next? Now, you can be a savage and just throw them right into the sewer and be like, yo, go listen to some uh, septic fumes, some motor, some uh, sequestrium. They might like sequestrium. Some morgue breath, some leprophiliac, some undergang. I wouldn't do that, though. If, like, somebody legitimately was like, hey, I, I'm new to this whole death metal thing. What's a, what's a good Cannibal Corpse record to start with? 
well, obviously Tomb of the Mutilated, even the, the barn shit, but I would throw a Corp Grinder record in there as well. And again, like I was saying, the singles on here had a lot of MTV Headbangers Ball playtime. And it really did help the band. Because, like, you would go to a Cannibal Corp show and it would actually be sold out. And if you're like, what? Like, yeah. Like, you would go see Deicide sometimes. There'd be 40 people. Tops. 40 people. And it'd just be like, alright. That's like 20, 20 years ago. Like, on, on, like, when Scars of the Crucifix came out, it was legitimately, like, dead. There was, like, no one at that fucking show. Like, I remember, like, my, my ex-girlfriend, she didn't have a ticket. And, uh, I'm, like, just standing there watching. Uh, and I just feel a tap on my shoulder. And she's, she's like, hey. I'm like, I'm like, ah. I'm like, you bought a ticket? She's like, nah, guy let me in. Said she would help fill out the place, like, because there was no one, like, that's what I mean, it was, like, dead. Like, death metal went through this weird time period where people didn't want the real shit. Like, they, like, I, I, again, like, they really didn't. So, I mean, some did, but... Most of the time, like, seriously, and I mean, no offense to these bands, but I've seen Goat Whore and Cattle of the Capitation countless times. Legit, and Misery Index as well. Countless times. Every show, like, every tour package had them on it. One of those bands. I don't... It was... I don't know. I just... It was a weird... Again, it was just a weird fucking time period. But I do feel I gotta give Cannibal some credit for staying Cannibal during this time period. They could have easily just thrown in, like, what the kids wanted. Throw in a breakdown. But, nah, they kept it. Cannibal Corpse, but again, this is way more technical, and that, that was what was popular during this time period. Necrophages came out with Epitep in 2004, so all that technicality, you, you started having this massive Canadian, like Quebec, technical death metal scene hitting the states with a vengeance and like Cryptopsy getting Lord Worm back for a new album with Once Was Not I got to see them on that tour and I got to see them a couple months prior to them making that new record, the last record with Lord Worm and they did None So Vile front to back and a couple demo tracks. And that was it. And it was just like one of the just best shows I've ever been to. Like legitimately hands fucking down. The second time. It was like a Tuesday night. First Unitarian Church though. But it was dead. No one there. We were supposed to play it, but another band on our record label was friends with the people that did security at the venue. They got first dibs. But, hey, I got to talk to Lord Worm about teaching English. He teaches, like, how, like people that speak French how to speak English. Pretty interesting dude, also. But, um, Cannibal Corpse Kill... Again, it's Cannibal Corpse with George on vocals, but definitely one of their more technical records. And again, 13 tracks, you know, 
I didn't really put it together that Eaten Back to Life had 12 tracks, but again, that's kind of, it really has a nice flow to it. And that's my only real complaint here, aside from some of the technicality that I kind of just feel, I'm like, all right, like, come on, come on. And I hate, I mean, it makes me feel, feel and sound like a dick, but like, And I already called it meat and potatoes death metal, but sometimes it might take the head of the table a few extra seconds to maybe hear you ask them to pass the potatoes. Okay, there we go. But still, though, it's a great death metal album. It's just... If, if I was going to pick, obviously, I'm going with Pierce From Within. But it's a good Cannibal Corpse record. Cannibal Corpse Kill, reissued by Hell's Headbangers. Death Metal. It's a little more technical than you might be used to with Cannibal Corpse. But still, it has that like Cannibal Corpse sound. But no Rob Russe, so you kind of don't have that, like, like, just that, like, I can't explain it. I'm not a guitar player, but if you go and listen to those Russe records, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Because with Paul's drumming, it's just, like, so good. Like, don't get me wrong, Pat's great. Pat O'Brien. I mean, I, I don't know what happened after the last tour and stuff. None of my business. But his guitar work is insane. He's a good guitar player. And uh, you got and Barrett as well. Like, so... Definitely worth your time if you've never heard it before for some reason. But some of you might just be like, all right, I'm like, because, like, here's the lyrics. Yeah. But definitely one of their more popular records, Cannibal Corpse Kill. Because you would see, like, you know, Joe. Schmo Hot Topic, like, wearing a Cannibal Corpse shirt around after Kill came out. I know that for a fact. Because I was in a band at the time, and I started seeing, like, kids wearing Cannibal Corpse shirts. And, like, asking, I was like, yeah, where'd you get that shirt at? And they'd be like, Hot Topic? Why? I was just, yeah, no, no. Like, I, I didn't care, but, like, I just thought it was curious. I was like, oh, they, I didn't know they... But then I, then I found out, I was like, wait, they all have the same shirt I do. Like, they all had the, you know, had the, the zombie dude with the sickle, and on the back it said, kill. Yeah, I mean, kind, again, it was a kind of weak shirt compared to, you know, I don't have it. It's in the, uh, the tomb, like my tomb of the mutilated zip up. OG logo. I know it's a it's a boot from Germany, but sorry, Cannibal Corpse. I'm not gonna wear this on a tomb of the mutilated shirt. It, it's just not gonna happen. But Cannibal Corpse Kill 2006. If you're a fan of death metal and you're a fan of Cannibal Corpse, you already know. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. As always, you fucking rule. Hails.